Today on Abbreviated Bios, we will take a look at the life of an escaped slave who became the first African American to write a novel. His name was William Wells Brown. My name is Steve Yoder and welcome to Abbreviated Bios. William Wells Brown was born around November 1814 near Lexington, Kentucky. Slave owners did not keep track of when slaves were born, so most slaves had no idea what their actual birthday was. His father was reputed to be James Higgins, his slave owner's cousin. His mother's name was Elizabeth. This illustrates how most slave owners treated their mulatto offspring as just another slave. William was bought and sold many times throughout his life. He at times worked for a state legislator from Missouri, a gambler, a steamboat owner, and a hotel owner. One of his slave owners was a Dr. Young who hired Brown out for a year to Mr. Walker, a Negro speculator. While working for Mr. Walker, Brown had to help out with the buying and selling of slaves. That meant he would clean up the slaves, he would cover up their whip marks, he would tell them exactly what they had to say, and uh, then they would be ready for sale. Brown described the viciousness of slavery in his autobiography. From breaking up families to rape to whippings, he did this for, as he said, the longest year I ever lived. Once, while working for Mr. Walker, William filled some wine glasses too full. Some gentlemen visiting the doctor spilled wine on their clothes. Walker gave William a dollar and a note to give to the jailer. Brown suspected something, so he found a sailor to read it to him. The note told the jailer to whip the bearer of the note and accept the dollar as pay. Brown went off and paid a free black to deliver the note. That person received the whipping. William convinced his mother Elizabeth to escape, but they were caught in Illinois. She was then sold down the Mississippi River, uh, which means they sold farther south in the United States, and Brown never saw her again. At age 19, William escaped when the steamboat he was working on docked in Cincinnati, Ohio. After days freezing and without food, he was helped by a Quaker who provided him with food, shelter, and clothing. The Quaker's name was Wells Brown. William took his name in honor of him and thus became William Wells Brown. After his escape, Brown began working for Elijah P. Lovejoy, the famous abolitionist. Brown described him as a good man and was later indebted to him for what little learning I had obtained while in slavery. In 1834, William married a free black named Elizabeth Schooner. They would have two daughters together, Clarissa and Josephine. Elizabeth and William divorced in 1847, and William kept custody of the daughters. William would later marry Anna Elizabeth Gray in 1860. They had two children who died young. Brown moved in 1836 to Buffalo, New York. He worked for nine years as a steamboat man on Lake Erie. He helped many slaves escape all the way to Canada. In 1842, Brown claimed to have helped 69 slaves escape to Canada. He also organized the Temperance Society. Uh, those were groups that uh, worked against alcoholism, and they gained 500 members. Brown worked as a lecturer for the Western New York Anti-Slavery Society from 1843 to 1847. During that time, he wrote the narrative of William Wells Brown about his time in slavery and his escape. Brown went to England in 1849 to lecture on abolition, and he stayed for five years because of the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850. He was an escaped slave, and the act uh, made it mandatory that the northern states help capture slaves. So he stayed there. While he was there, he wrote some books, including the 1853 novel Clotel. Eventually, British followers purchased its freedom so he could return to the U.S. Brown's novel, Clotel, is considered the first African-American novel. It tells the story of two daughters fathered by Thomas Jefferson who are sold away from their family. Clotel is impregnated by her owner, who professes love but sells her anyway. She will later escape and save her daughter from slavery. In 1858, Brown wrote the first play by an African-American called The Escape. 
1863, he wrote The Black Man, His Antecedents, His Genius, and His Achievements, a history book. In 1867, Brown wrote The Negro in the American Rebellion, His Heroism and His Fidelity. This was a history of blacks in the Civil War. In 1874, he wrote The Rising Sun, or The Antecedents and the Advancement of the Colored Race. So he goes all the way back uh, from the Ethiopians immigrating to Carthage, all the way up to uh, the slave power rising in the United States. In his later years, Brown worked as a physician. Back then, all you had to do was say you were a doctor and you were a doctor. He wrote his final book, My Southern Home, in 1880. William Wells Brown died on November 6, 1884, of a tumor of the bladder in Chelsea, Massachusetts. Brown should be remembered for greatly advancing African-American literature in the United States. You may have noticed a lot of generic pictures in this presentation. That's because there are just very, very few pictures of African-Americans during the 1800s. Uh, it was lucky that Williams Wells Brown was pretty famous. So we have a couple of drawings of him, but we don't have any photographs. We definitely don't have any photographs of his family. Uh, but I tried to do the best I could to help you understand what his life was like. Thank you for listening and watching Abbreviated Bios.